Timmy Joe reviews anything. Reviewing computer parts on YouTube. That's Woo! You gotta be pumped on that, right? Well, computer parts! Woo! Oh, yeah. Hi there guys, my name is Timmy Joe, I make videos about computers on the internet, and today, uh, because yesterday was kind of a Debbie Downer of a video, <laughs> thought maybe instead of badmouth and Intel CPUs, we'd use them as tools to look at something fun and exciting. Something I've, uh, I'm surprised I've ever got my hands on. This is a weird product. It's one of those things that's like, why'd they do that? But I guess, you know gotta try different things to get some fun stuff on the go so yeah this is an AIO you might be like how is it so small in a little box it's the uh, master cooler or sorry master liquid maker 92 by cooler master and this came out about two years ago and I have a very unused example here I'm pretty sure it was used at some point but who knows how good it even is compared to when it was new but if we pull it out of here this is an AIO. This is an AIO. There's a cold plate. There's, see, I think it was being used because I see some markings here, but probably not for long because uh, I remember when this came out, it had very, very bad results. And you can still buy it today. You, you want to see? It's weird. Let's look. See? Huh? It's on their website. It even rotates. It wrote, stick it up your butt and rotate. We'll figure out how to rotate. Oh, there we go. It even does that, but uh, you can still buy it on Newegg for $84.99, which is uh, $15 less than MSRP because I looked at some reviews and stuff, and we see here on, uh, what's this, uh, Tech Power Up, it says it was $99.99, and uh, yeah. So I, I just love looking at weird stuff like this, so let's go ahead and uh, that should be it for what's in the box. Yep, it's a little brackety thing. And we'll put this boop, up here. We're going to install it on my 80 or not, sorry, 9600K and see what the temperatures are like versus a full blown AIO. So, yeah, this thing is super, super weird. Super weird, man. Boof. So, in the box, this thing's like all brand new, barely been touched. There's some hardware here. There's a mounting bracket. There's even, ooh, I love when they come with thermal paste. I want to thank Tyler for uh, letting me borrow this. He bought it just because it's weird. Got a little bit of maker cooler paste there. Got the stuff and things you'll need. Looks like you can power it off of a SATA if you really want to. Interesting. We'll leave that there. I don't think I'm going to use that hardware to mount it, but just in case, there's a little uh, certificate of warranty in there. Sure. So... I'm going to go ahead and put it on my test bench. I've already done a bit of uh, testing. Just We're going to go stock speeds. I don't assume that this thing will do very well. Um, there we go. Uh, I don't think it'll do very well overclocking things. So we're just going to go stock and see how bad the temps are. And heck, maybe if we can overclock, we'll do a little bit of that. Hoping I can keep the same bracket on this thing. Here, we'll go ahead and we'll speed this up. Let's see how she goes. She's all installed. It was a super big pain in the butt. As you see here, there was uh, like the little uh, hoses are in the way to attach it. And you might say, well, you're not using the bracket. Oh, it's not spinning. That's not good. Why isn't it spinning? Uh-oh. I don't know. Maybe it's broken. I can't be. No, shut it off. Shut it off. Shut it off, I said. Oh my god, shut it off. Well, something's wrong. Um, I have it plugged in. Oh, well, maybe you have to, yes, you have to plug it in. Ha, you have to plug the SATA in too. I thought you just plug it in on a fan header. Weird. Okay, I have a SATA here somewhere. Contact! Oh, oh, now, no. This isn't plugged in now. Ah. There we go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> it got me worried for a second. All right, we're online. So you have to plug 
Uh, a fan header, I guess, just to get RPM signals to the motherboard, and uh, maybe to know how to, yeah, to, to increase the RPM if need be. And then a SATA definitely has to be plugged in on this. A little light comes on, there's a Cooler Master logo. All right, <laughs> that's much more acceptable. Boof! Okay, so we'll bring up old Ida64, if I can find it. There we go. And hardware monitor. And then we'll, uh, I ran it for five minutes last time. It never really went over 51, 52 degrees uh, with the AIO I had on there before, which is a big 280 millimeter, you know, double wide, super thick AIO liquid cooler from GamerStorm. Start! Not so bad at first. 52 degrees. Hmm? This is that complete stock. We'll let this run for five minutes and then we'll see. If we can do a little bit of overclocking. Oh, okay, we're back. Uh, so, sure, it'll cool the stock eight or ninety six hundred K at four point five gig. I don't know. It seems like it's throttling four point three gigahertz. I don't know. The clocks are really low, but they turboed up to four point five at one point. But I don't know. The way they do their stock is just, just silly. So I know that with the other AO, I could go 5.1 gigahertz uh, at like 70, like under, under 70 degrees while running Cinebench. So uh, we'll go ahead and overclock this thing and see how far it'll go with this weirdo thing. I have a feeling as soon as I lock it in at like 4.7 gigahertz, it's going to be done with. Do it up. All right, we're at 5 gigahertz, and uh, it's not so stable, and uh, we've already hit 75 degrees just loading into Windows, uh, but this should work. Okay, ah, 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 there we go, 83, 84, 85, 86, <laughs> 86, we're at 5 gigahertz, and it's working. Is it blowing hot air? Five gigahertz with the Cooler Master Li Liquid Master Maker 92. Ma Maker Liquid. Good one. This is working. And it seems to be at full five gigahertz the whole time on the Cinebench run. That's not bad at all. We're going to do a burn-in test after this, though. But, yeah, 1,200 in Cinebench. That's right in line. So, this thing at short bursts so far seems to actually not be doing too, too bad. Would you like to save your benchmark score? Yeah, sh sure. Save my benchmark score and I'll open up Ida and we'll watch that just fail immediately. But so far I'm actually kind of impressed that it was able to do that, especially considering this thing is not new. It's uh, it's definitely, I, bu I bought it used, or actually Tyler bought it used I should say. And he was unsure if it was ever used before. I assume someone bought it, put it on their computer, and realized it was not good. And just ended up buying a regular tower cooler. But I uh, also noticed that this fan at the back stopped spinning. So it must be something to do with... Ouch! Uh, saving energy or something. Or making low noise at idle. Turning it on! Stress CPU and the k -ish. That's what I had it on before. I don't know why. All right, we're running. If it can make five minutes, I'd be very impressed. Let's cut to when it eventually conks out. Okay, I think I just damaged my camera sensor. Uh, we're at eight minutes and 52 seconds at five gigahertz, and it has yet to throttle. That's pretty awesome. I would say this thing's actually way better than I thought it would be. I would say, I mean, it's about as big as a pretty, you know, Hyper 212 Evo. Probably, you know, it's like double the cost at least. But, I mean, what's the air coming out of it? It's got 40 degree air coming out of it. And uh, the temperatures never got over 93 on one of the cores. So, and it's like averaging out right now at... 800 or uh, 88 87 800 80. <laughs> anyways I, i'm thoroughly impressed this little thing's actually pretty cool and you know where i could see this actually being useful is when you turn it like this and i hate to do it it's as high as a video card 
So if you have a small form factor case with air ventilation right there, it's not a bad deal. Like it's, you, you could fit it in a little case that's, you know, where you're putting a full-size graphics card in there and it's going to blow air over the VRM and it'll do five gigahertz on a ninth gen core i5 with six cores. So I, I'm blown away. <laughs> Master Liquid Maker 92 actually isn't half bad. I thought it was going to be much, much worse, especially considering I guarantee this thing's at least a year old and it's been used at some point, at least once, and there's got to be some liquid permeation inside it, uh, especially considering it doesn't have very much liquid in it. Pretty, pretty cool. So yeah, we're at over 10 minutes and it never throttled and it didn't fail the test, stressing the CPU, FPU, and cache. I'm, I'm astonished. And it's really quiet, actually. Running full tilt there, it was it was audible, but it was like in a case you wouldn't hear it, you know, and the, the fans are small on it. They're 92 millimeters, so I think that's actually a pretty cool little piece of kit. So I'm Matt Watch on Instagram and Twitter. I don't know how I could recommend this over uh, a tower cooler, especially when Cooler Master sells such inexpensive, very well-working ones, like the Hyper 212 Evo, and it's RGB competitors or whatever or whatever these days, but uh, it's it's cool that they made a little AIO it actually works in such a small form factor and There is a use case for it. I think in a small form factor case as long as you have at least You know the height of a video card to work with Cool. I'll see you guys in another video. Thank you very much for watching um, we, we had a fun day today. I'm impressed with the product and I'm, I'm just, I don't know what to say. Again. I don't know what to say again. Bye, guys. Watch Timmy Joe on Instagram and Twitter.